प्लीज फेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू अनोदा एडिशन ऑफ स्पेशल गेस्ट ऑन क्राई आउट रेडियो ऑन टेलीविजन आई एम योर होम बुल होस्ट चौदो गोम्बा and um before we begin or proceed with today's happenings let me first of all say happy new year to all our audience um we've been missing um just to tell you all that we've been working hard to make sure 2019 is a successful year um today in our studio we have Dr. Nicolas Santo and Dr. um Belinda Babila and a host of humanitarians that have been helping our people in southern cameroon and our refugees in nigeria ladies and gentlemen um we know our audience um we have people that are very loyal that have been asking us about the situations and what happened in munyenge and guzang um we want to let you all know that we have completed these investigations and um you all will get it in our next episodes that are coming and for that of general ivo um we can't lie to you all because we don't go by ratings we still have a puzzle to connect but nevertheless we are almost there and we'll bring it out when we are done so in that note let's turn over our cameras and welcome dr nicola <coughs> santo live in our studio and dr Belinda Babila and we also have a host of humanitarians that are going to come up live and they will tell us what they have been doing and what they plan to do to our IDPs and our refugees. Dr. Nicolas Santos, welcome once more to our Cry Out Studio. As you can tell, there are some a lot of changes and welcome Dr. Belinda Babila. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it's, a, pleasure know, it's a pleasure be being here. Okay. Um now we are going to proceed um we have Miss Tessie that is live from Hamburg Miss Tessie are you there Hello Hello Yes. Is Miss Tessy the Oh, Miss Tessy you there? Come here from Canada. Oh, Miss Tessy from Canada. Okay, Miss Tessy welcome. And um we have Mr. Mr. Martin. Is Mr. Martin there? Okay, so we have Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin welcome. Mr. Martin can you hear us? Hello Mr. Martin can you hear us? Please respond. Hello Mr. Martin. Yes, please yeah. respond. Yes, I'm there. I'm there. Okay, so 5 5 to 5 you can hear us very well. And um, we also have um Miss Pascaline. Miss Pascaline, welcome. And um, we're going to begin. So, ladies and gentlemen, these um men and women are the people that have been helping our IDPs and our refugees um with the situation we have going back in southern cameroon um we'll start with dr nicola santos dr nicola santos you were in our studios last time and um, um after resigning from the interim government you did notify us that you were going to go in into humanitarian activities um welcome tell us what you've done so far and um we we'll move from there thank you mr chodong gumba uh, thank you fellow viewers and welcome my uh, dr benina a humanitarian partner and uh, welcome to all of you who have joined the other group of humanitarian uh, uh, activists humanitarian activists on board uh, 
true, when I did resign from the interim government, I indicated that uh, I found myself into the interim government as a result of having been in humanitarian works. And uh, you will recall that uh, I have the Association of Psychological and Psychiatric Services, which is a clinic in, uh, on, on, in, 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 in Cameroon as far back as 2014-15. And this takes care of uh, the psychiatric and psychological disturbances. And uh, given that uh, my background of studies is in the uh, psychological field, uh, that's how I came to be the Under Secretary of the Health and Human Services. But uh, when I left them, uh, it was because I had seen that um, doctors are supposed to be the ones to heal after politicians create the mess. So if we, uh, the doctors, are also part of the mess, and then it becomes a situation whereby no, nobody is healing another. And so I decided to go in to look for other partners who can help me and uh, work with me to clear the mess. And I want to re reassure you that uh, now we have an, a very big uh, organization that comprises of CEOs of political, of uh, humanitarian activists on the ground who are apolitical who have nothing to do with the struggle. Like Dr. Belinda Babila is coming from a missionary perspective and has nothing to do and not interested in anything to do with politics. She is here typically to play that role of the missionary face of the humanitarian services. And uh, I am also in providing services and, and, and counseling services and psychological help to the revolution and also some medical help working with some other medic team of medical doctors. So we have come up with a big organization now that comprise of actors that have done some division of level of somebody takes what because you know somebody takes a particular activity to fulfill because in the humanitarian field is too broad for one person to cover. Okay. Well just to reiterate on what you've said, I was going to also let the attention to our audience to understand that at this point in time, I know you're political, even though you left the interim government, but uh, we want to let our audience know uh, Dr. Belinda Babila, before even the Southern Cameroon situation, has been involved in humanitarian activities, not only in Southern Cameroon, but around Africa. So Dr. Belinda Babila, we want to say thank you for what you have been doing. And um, we know how difficult it has been with, by, by you trying to get into this, being involved into this because of the perspective out there, but we understand that you are not involved, you're just purposely trying to help your people because you feel like charity begins at home Absolutely. but must not end there. Absolutely. If you can go to Nigeria to do this work, Absolutely. why not to your people? So what can you tell us, just tell us a little bit about your organization, the Belinda Babila uh, Foundation. Good day, viewers. Good day, everyone. Um, Again, we are the Belinda Babylon Foundation, Heal the World, Africa. Our core objectives, really, we've been, in, we've been in, um, legally in operations for the past couple of years. We're entering our three years now. And our core values is really just to elevate poverty in the underserved, in the underprivileged con um, communities in Africa as a whole. And we've, um, we've had several outreaches in the past, you know, and... Cameroon is, you know, the, 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 the unrest in Cameroon has, you know, has prompted us to shift our directions now to the internally displaced in the northwest, in the southwest, and in the far north of Cameroon as well. And that is the umbrella which we work. We are a Christian humanitarian organization going out to really, at the end of the day, wipe the tears, to really, at the end of the day, restore hope. At the end of the day, just be a voice to the voiceless. We are apolitical. We are absolutely about the sanitation of the hearts of the people. We're absolutely about, you know, restoring, restoring hope spiritually, physically, and mentally. So that's, at the end of the day, that's, that's the global picture of what we do. Okay. Thank you, um, Dr. Belinda. Um, we'll move to Ms. Tessie, Ms. Tessie is in um, Canada. Ms. Tessie of the Mao uh, Foundation. Ms. Tessie, what is the Mao Foundation? And we've seen so much of what you've been doing down there. Just give us a brief, you know, um, information of what you have been doing. 
and um, some of your people uh, down there, we, we know Miss AAAL was supposed to connect, uh, but she's been finding it difficult to connect. Welcome, Miss Miss Stacy. <laughs> Be very be audible a little bit. Yes, go ahead. Um, uh, Stacy, your microphone, uh, a little bit closer to your microphone. Oh. The audio, you're far from your mic. Okay. Is it better? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, this is my testing of my global solution. And uh, as well as the ID, where our product exists. It's not. They can. They can hear. Nobody can hear you. They can hear you. Uh, um, let's go to Miss Pascaline. Miss Tessie will come back to you, so we can um, save some time. Adjust your 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 microphone. Uh, we are having issues. Um, let's go to Miss Pascaline. Miss Pascaline um, will be able to take you now. Hello, Miss Pascaline. Welcome once more. Miss Pascaline, can you hear us? Hello. All right. We got Miss Jenny. Miss Jenny is on while Miss Pascaline is coming back on. All right. We got Miss Jenny. Miss Jenny. All right. Miss Jenny, welcome. Hi. Welcome. Thank yeah, you. Welcome. Your audio is good. Yeah. Yeah. Your audio. Okay. That's good, yeah. Good. Um, yeah, thank you for inviting me in this show. That is, a, I'm very privileged because this is something very inspiring. You know, when the revolution just started, we were just doing things without any coordination. So when Dr. Santos came up with this idea, I find it, I, I mean, my, our, our NGO found it uh, very, very interesting. Anyway, anyway let me introduce um, my NGO and myself. Um, when the the crisis started, we in Hamburg, that is in Germany, the Southern Cameroonian community in uh, Hamburg in Germany precisely, we decided to come together and form an association. Uh, basically, we have uh, two main objectives. Our objectives are, number one is um, to, uh, information campaign. That means raising awareness about the ongoing crisis in Southern Cameroon. I mean, raising awareness and sensitizing the public about the ongoing crisis in Southern Cameroon. And secondly, is the humanitarian aspect, which is, I mean, practically the biggest aspect in what we are doing. And um, since we started off, we have been able to reach out to so many pe people unprivileged, disadvantaged people. We are talking about the IDPs, the refugees, and um, 
the casualties and even right to uh, the, the prisoners in Kondingi who have been able to deliver help to these people as well. In 2018, um, we 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 arrived. I mean, we we practically um, uh, let me say implemented. Yeah, let me use the word implemented. We implemented 19 projects all across southern Cameroons, right up to Nigeria. And thinking of the fact that we just started off in. 2017 in December, I think that is a great achievement. And, and uh, let me also mention at this point that our association is just at the beginning phase. So I think um, we still need to improve in many aspects and we are very happy to be part of this, um, this come together with other organizations. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Ms. Jenny. Thank you very much, Ms. Jenny. Um, we'll go to Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin is in Nigeria. He's been doing a marvelous work. Mr. Martin, can you kindly tell us a little bit about some of the things that you have been doing? Mr. Martin, can you hear us? Hello, Mr. Martin. Can you hear us, Mr. Martin? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Introduce yourself and your organization and what you have yeah, been doing. Good evening doing. to everyone. Yes, be audible. Mr. Martin. Okay, it's uh, a bit. The network is not at best at the moment. But let me see what I have. The few minutes that I have here. Um, I'm Jim Martin. And the executive director of Cameroon Humanitarian Relief Initiative. This organ was the United States by some Cameroonians, Southern Cameroonians who are there and uh, thinking of what they can do for their brothers and sisters who are found in the predicament they have found themselves in. So they have been involved in taking care of refugees, IDPs, and have uh, had to four different lo localities in the uh, I just want to, and our organization has been written, especially in Kondi, on a bi weekly basis. That means every month they reach out to the ice and give out food, toiletries, and other provisions that they need in prison. And we have lately also involved in active health, taking care of 100 pregnant women back in Cameroon through characters. These are the things our organization has been doing back, uh, uh, in, back in Nigeria and Cameroon. The network is not so good, I don't know the deception of what I'm saying, but that is the few things I can say now on this program. Okay, well, um, thank you. I think we could hear you. Um, if, well, if we want you, we're going to bring you back on. You've introduced yourself and what you're doing. We're going to move on to Ms. Pascaline. Ms. Pascaline, please um, let us know what you have been doing so far down there. Welcome. Hello, Ms. Pascaline. Yeah, we can talk about them. Yes. Hello, Miss. 
Yes, go ahead, Miss Pascaline. Miss Pascaline, your mic, we, we can't. can't hear you. Something is wrong with your mic. We can't hear you, Miss Pascaline. No, we can't. Okay. Taxi for Taxi. Ms. Pascaline, can you use your earphones? Can you hear us? Ms. Pascaline, can you hear us? Okay, something is wrong. You can hear us, but we can't hear you. The audience cannot hear you. Uh, let's go to let's go to Ms. Anastasi if she's on. Miss, I will come back to you. Don't worry, we're going to come back to you. Okay. Okay. Welcome back. Yes, I'm on. Can you hear me? Very well. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, we just lost you again. Do what you did the first time when I said very well. Okay. Yes. I have my microphone. Go ahead, go ahead. Yes, um, for me, what is this important is this aspect of trying to go with different. Yeah, what is important? We lost you. We, we can hear you, but you're a little bit far away from your mic again. Pardon? Hello? Hello? Yes. It's very long, I'm going down. Pardon? It's going on and off. I don't know. Just have it in this position right now and just and talk. I can, I'm trying to talk. Okay. Yes, go ahead. About the necessity. Because it we really don't know what is happening on the ground. Okay, let's move to Dr. Nicolas Santos, who is here in the studio. Uh, Dr. Nicolas Santos, uh, we have a question for you. We know you did say that you're going to start this. How are you? And how, how are you doing to raise the funds that is needed for the work that is supposed to be done? Yeah, so far, so far uh, we have been somehow successful, but not too successful in raising funds. Um, we, the members of the various organizations which, are, which came under this umbrella, uh, we have the IOSA African Youth of Sustainable Agriculture, SCCG, uh, which is in Hamburg, that you have just seen the, 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 the leaders of those groups. 
talking about pride, we have pride uh, the foundation, then we also have Dr. Belinda's foundation, Mawu foundation and others. So these are people who sacrifice their own heart and money. They put their money into this project and by so doing, others see that um, we are very committed individuals to help. So they also assist us by giving some little finances. And um, uh, amongst all these foundations listed, I think Dr. Belinda Babila is the most powerful because she has been on the ground and she has done a lot of uh, a lot of good work on the ground that we have videos here to show about. And then we also have uh, members of our own organizations, like one of our members went on the ground incognito because they don't want identity to be re re revealed. So he went and did some work for us. And then the other, like Mao Foundation and others, they have representatives on the ground who have been uh, doing things, uh, uh, quite good things for the people on the ground. We'll come to those things when, when I'll list them when the time comes. But as, so far as finances are concerned, we have been putting our own money into the project. Like for uh, example, right now that we are, for example, we are about to uh, put our charity and all our money, all our finances into one basket. We don't want A, collecting uh, receiving, receiving donations and be also doing the same thing. So we of all the partners in this uh, in this um, uh, forum of CEOs of of humanitarian foundations on ground have decided to choose Dr. Belinda uh, Babila's foundation uh, to be the basket for all the CEOs, so that we will she will know and we will sit and decide who gets what to implement what according to the specialty or specialization of that group. Because here we have, we're talking of psychological issues. She is a 501c in the United States and is tax exempt. Any money that you give, you can get back from your uh, tax filing. And then also, uh, it's legal in the United States. And um, uh, she's versed with the terrain. And then why did we do this? We did this because we discovered that uh, some people on the ground were getting finances from from, from, from numerous organizations for the same purpose. For example, you have someone who is sick in the refugee camp who will come to A and collect money for the same thing, go to B and collect money for the same thing. So now, by networking among ourselves, we can, we can, we can minimize our, our, our resources, which are not even there, by not um, uh, multiplying on a particular uh, case. So, um, and then also, it's going to help us to focus on areas of specialty because the humanitarian field is so broad, you know, yes. so broad. We have uh, teenage pregnancies, uh, children delivering children there, and they need counseling. We have diseases that are cropping up like HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, there's a need for uh, condoms to be shared there, uh, counseling to be taken place. Uh, all these children that are delivering, the um, women don't have hospitals whereby they could deliver sometimes. They, they, are deliver, they, are, they deliver through through harsh methods and then um, uh, there's lack of food there's lack of medicine and then also there was one case one pathetic case that i attended to which was this case of one of our youths that has undergone uh, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and uh, depression to the extent uh, psychotic depression he was in chains and I had to do some psychological counseling, working hand in hand with Caritas. I did an evaluation and assessment and also with some antipsychotropic prescriptions. And the doctors of Caritas were so happy, you know, about that case. And that case is doing now fine. So we have a lot of people there who are already depressed, who are already behaving mentally uh, unfit. And we have to do something in different areas. That's why these organizations that we have come together as one, we have different, different areas of specialty that we address. Okay. Now, this question, I will, I will bring it down to you, Dr. Belinda. Um, now, the question is this. You've been down there, and we understand that there is a problem whereby our refugees are not registering. And that is a big problem. What do you think can be done so they can register, and how do they go about registering? Okay. All right. Regarding that, the UNHCR is the legal entity responsible for the refugees in, the, in, in Nigeria. Anybody who comes to Nigeria needs to go through the UNHCR registration system so that you can be assigned a number and you can be recognized as an identified refugee. So just going to, to, to Nigeria and avoiding being UNHCR verified and registered 
defeats the purpose because, I mean, they have allocations as far as how aid to the refugees and all the registered refugees get the UNHCR allocated aid as far as housing, for example, mm -hmm. as far as the little stipends that they get and any other cats or any other support that needs to go to you, you will not get it unless you're registered. So this goes out to all the refugees who are fleeing into Nigeria. Y'all need to get there, but you need to go get registered at the UNHCR office because that is the only way you begin to get verifiable aid, you know, coming to you. Okay, it is, it is obvious that the suffering is unbearable it is obvious that the suffering is unbearable to our people down there. Absolutely. And you have been there. How is the situation with regards to feeding and uh, medical care? Okay. Well, we went there recently. We had a three-day um, outreach over the December 13th through the 16th. And one of the reasons why we really wanted to go there was to really be, we'll get uh, on-ground need analysis, to go on ground and see for ourselves. There's been too much, I hear said, there's been too much side talks. So we, we, you know, we thought it wise to go on ground and do an in-field need assessment. And from what we gathered from the three days being there, obviously, obviously, food, you know, and nutrition, it's, you know, it's obviously number one because we all need to eat to mm -hmm. be able to, to be sustained. And, you know, the next need is health care. And we, the Brenda Babylon Foundation, we did take over almost a continent full of medical supplies over there. But again, you know, just to go in there and, and see the, the need, I mean, as we speak right now, going by the UNHCR statistics, there are, are 32,000 registered, 32,601 registered Cameroonians in the camps. All over the you know the various camps because there's camps all in, over yes there's camps in Ikom yes and then there's camps in Ogoja okay. so and there's camps in Benue okay. so there are different camps and the UNHCR is only you know they have only so many camps that they overlook so it means that technically they are not really overlooking all yeah, because some are just in like little little settlements they're not in UN recognized set of areas yeah so those as well need to look for a way to move into the UN recognized certain areas so that, you know, help will be centralized. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's what we go back to that question of making sure that they go get registered because yeah. that is the only way what whenever aid is available, it goes to the registered centers first. Because yeah. that's that's the centers that are you know kind of you know authorized per se so we we are we're really planning on the refugees to go and get registered, registered yeah. go and get verified so that you get into the systems and then whatever benefits the UNHCR is a huge organization we're just NGO sustain you know just sustaining give just, me a helping hand just adding on you adding know they on, are yeah. the they are the master players in here but again they cannot sustain the the entire social problems in there they would they would look at the immediate immediate present needs, but there's some there's some social habilitative problems that need to be addressed. And that's where NGOs come in. Okay. Yeah. So let's go to Miss Tessy. I think Miss Tessy is ready now to talk. Um, the question that I have for Miss Tessy apparently is the issue of prostitution among refugees in you know IDPs. Tell the world about these facts because we understand that it is rampant. We know they have to survive. But again, I mean, how or what do we do to prevent things like diseases and uh, down there? Miss Tessie, you on now? Is your audio perfect now? Hello? Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, please. Right there. Okay, um, speaking about the issue of, um, by the way, I think I should introduce myself as a chance to do that. Um, I am Marcy of any global solution. What global solution? Um, international. 
it just broke the momentum and it just kind of down. And um, we focus, our main intention or mission is to help to bring down really, which is inflicting our people. And so what we are trying to do, seeing when we just talk about poverty, we see the effect of poverty. Where you come in right now, talking about prostitution, the girls are trying to survive. And trying to survive, they sleep around with all sorts of men and bring unwanted pregnancies, all sorts of diseases. Some babies are born and buried alive. And um, this is the fact in the refugee camps because they don't have the means. So how does Mao come to assist? Mao, Mao do we give food and housing for the, our refugees? Some projects. Therefore, we try to empower the women and girls and the youth. We've opened up farm projects, we've opened up um, training projects such as sewing, hairdressing. We're building up on kids. They need something to do because of the idleness. That is why they are going around and um, the lack of means to sustain themselves. And um, so far, as a brief introduction, that's all I can say for now concerning what Mao is doing and the situation on the ground concerning the girls and the women. Thank you very much, Mark Tessie. Um, we're going to bring in Miss Anastasia. Miss Anastasia, are you on? Ms. Anastasia, are you on? I'm on. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes. I don't know as well. Yes. Let me see. I, I think I'm on. Can you hear me, Mr. Theodore? It's good. Mm -hmm. good. You're good. It's Can you hear me now? Go ahead. Okay. I am on. What? Can no. I? Do you have a question for me or should I just say something? Yes. For what you've been doing, I know you've been working with Dr. Nick. You are one of the people that had contacted me months ago to, you know, bring you all together on cry out. And I really want to applaud you of what you're doing. Um, a lot of people don't know you but today please introduce yourself so the people should know one of those that is, is behind all this where the charity organizations will come together and actually can give some kind of accountability and confidence back to the people okay i am anastasia kuma i live in germany i am a counselor by profession i i, I knew dr nick in the days of hss and uh, while I worked with him, I noticed that there were certain things that could be done differently, which we did not succeed to do with um, the authorities of HSS at the time. So we continued because before we left, we had a kind of working group that we had formed. And also we had succeeded with the help of Mr. Solomon Amabo. I must give him this, this um, yeah, I must congratulate him for his help to have brought so many refugees and many NGOs together. So we were like a melting pot where people bring problems and then we try to ask for help from different refugees or we give the help ourselves. So in doing this, we notice that the help is so huge or the needs are so huge. And unfortunately, the, the things we succeed to give only end in particular places. Mark Tessy is one of those who have been doing one of those very specific things to go to the far off places where no one wants to go to, because in those places you don't have the television where you show that you are doing a great job. So 
But the problem why it is important for us to come together is because if we don't have a good organizational structure, we'll never be able to solve this problem for real. And I bet you it's not so much, it's just a little sacrifice. If we can have a way to just have about $5, $1 a day as Amazonians, we are going to solve this problem. We are going to have it under control. And I can also understand when people fear to give their money, when they are afraid to give their money, because no one gives them accountability. But what we have been doing so far, we make sure that the donors see how their money um, is used. They are even free to call the people that will claim to help. We don't send fake pictures, fake videos asking for help. We find out if the help is real, because there are also some very smart people who want to misuse this situation. So we investigate, we give the help, and we follow it up. Okay. So, how so much, far, this plan is... How much trust exists right now amongst you all? Because there is an issue of trust. How much trust exists right now amongst you all? Among us NGOs that we have been working together, we have no problem because everybody can see how um, transparent we have been in dealing with money and handling um, issues that come uh, come to us. We have no problem, and that's why today, if we are even going to carry on a fundraising, we will have to do that only through an organization that is registered. That. The government can ask for accountability, that anybody who gives his money can ask for accountability. Because this money is not our personal money. This money is because there is a problem. And so the people can trust us because this transparency is there and there is a structure that can follow up if this money is used or not. So it's not about me giving you a good for me, it's about an account with and uh, Article 501C protecting it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let's go back and take on uh, Miss Pascaline. I think her audio seems to be okay now. Miss Pascaline, can you come on? Yes, Miss Pascaline, we can see you. She's sleeping. Hello. What? I live. I live. Is she sleeping? Okay, um, Mr. Nick, um, I have a question for you. Is it true that some have been taking all the credits of the work that is happening down there? And um, why is this? And why is it that some of these organizations don't mention others that are also doing a good work? down there um i believe that the few networks and social media that people use to propagate themselves of what they do does not catch some of the activities that we have been doing remember this help this humanitarian help we are offering to our people a lot of people are involved in it Almost every household in the diaspora has at least donated a pair of shoes or something. But I think some people on the ground who are closer to the refugees or the victims have been able to ferry in some bags and tons of rice through trailers, uh, propagating that they are the most comfortable and the most trusted and people should put money only on their baskets. They fail to see all what we are doing because, on the other hand, we also have people who are out to criticize us to make us look as if what we have been doing is so negligible, which is not the case. So uh, I think that there is some politics in everything, and that politics is also in the humanitarian work. So you have been hearing names of the Aya Foundation, of the Makongo Charities. These are all organizations that are in this forum where we are but they have hardly given us a feedback of what they are doing or how it's going. But we don't blame them. We know they are doing a good job because this is like something that all of us have to get up from sleep and help. Everybody does his own share. Now is the time 
for all of them also to know that we have grouped ourselves together we have grouped ourselves together and we are doing a tremendous job for our people we want to do it we don't want anybody to give us credit the credit will speak for itself on what, based on what we are doing on the ground thank you okay how do the people have guarantees that their money will go to the needy good question everything we have been doing on the ground we have hardly asked money from the people uh, Dr. Belinda has been existing in the Belinda Babila Foundation and has been receiving some donations and carrying out projects with her own personal money, for example. We have been carrying projects here that I have here, a list of projects that we have been carrying out, paying hospital bills, sending medication, offering food, taking care of psychological interventions and other things without asking money from the public. The Mao Foundation and others have been functioning in that way. But we have discovered that some people were using some sort of political strategies in the humanitarian work to some sort of make us work with them so that they can keep all the donations. And at the end of the day, there is untransparency and mismanagement. And it made the people to stop giving because of donor fatigue and mismanagement, mistrust and whatsoever. They stop giving. So now, with the coming back of individuals like us or the conglomeration of individuals like us who are removing our own money and putting into the game or into the into, into the into the activities of helping refugees people don't start to have trust they say oh if these people are doing a good job because there are the videos there are the photographs and everything to prove on what is being done so everything goes there so people will have more trust in us right now in contributing because they will know that it's going to where they want it to go. And that notwithstanding, Dr. Belinda Babila, for example, her Babila Foundation, if you have noticed, we decided to choose her as the ambassador of the CEO forums yes. to spearhead all collection of the funds. It goes into her account. Okay. And Definitely. I am here in the United States that I can easily pick up my phone and call the IRS and check on how much has been donated into that account. And then the videos she will bring and the videos we will bring because when we go into the money, we're going to say, oh, Dr. Nick, these people, these various camps need psychological counseling. We have this and these cases on the ground. Handle that. What is your cost to go to Nigeria to take care of this? Or how do we get some other counselors to intervene in this? You bring a budget. Some others are building farm projects, like Mao Foundation. Farm projects, tailoring, and other handicraft things for these uh, refugees and other people. So that to so keep them busy. So they will bring a project and then we will finance. We will finance from the money that goes to the Belinda Babila Foundation as a result of this uh, publicity. Okay. And I came here with a surprise for her as Dr. Nick not as, uh, as, as from my group, because when people see you, you donate yourself, then they will be encouraged to donate. Not people only come and say, oh, I need your money. I need this. I need that. I am Dr. Nick. I'm going to put $2,000, which is 1 million francs CFA, into the Belinda Babila Foundation Can you put as, the, the, camera as the ambassador. See? Yes. This 1 million francs CFA for my own donation personally as Dr. Nick, okay. for this beginning of this drive, I want to begin this drive, that people should donate to the Belinda Babila Foundation so that we can together, as the CEOs of all the various groups, work on areas of specialized or specialties so, so as to enhance division of labor in taking care of our refugees in taking care of our prisoners in taking care of our internally displaced so when we offer monies like this when we offer monies like this we encourage you people to donate each and everyone watching viewers donate to dr belinda babila foundation so that she can now decide with the other members on who does what and when, because the humanitarian field is so broad. Thank you. Okay, so Dr. Belinda Babila, um, Dr. Nicolas Santo, as I can read here, has given the sum of $2,000 to kickstart this fund-raising drive. I think, it, I think it merits a, yes. a lot, round of think, applause. Uh, 
That yes, merits a lot of applause. It, it does unique. merit. A um, they say charity begins at home. I like that approach. Um, our audience, the viewers, are definitely watching. Um, that is an equivalent of about a million francs CFA. That will go a long way to, to our people. Now, I understand that um, this is um, a group of foundations, CEOs of different humanitarian organizations. Exactly. What us as cry out would give as an advice is let's use the field of medicine where you have dentists specialized in, you know, our teeth. We have ophthalmologists, you know, that if you all can do division of labor, it will go a That's long a way. Very That's smart. Yes, it will go a long way. And I think there will be the issue of IDPs or refugees trying to scam their way through because of the hardship of calling this organization, getting money from this organization, calling this other organization, it will reduce. Because now, one problem comes in, all of you are aware of the problem, and you all know who it's specializes in handling, this part in handling that part of a exactly. problem. It will reduce the scamming, and it will do more work to our people. Exactly. Yes. So let's move on to our next um, person, CEO, that is in ground one, as they call it, that is in Nigeria, Mr. Tem Martin. Mr. Tem Martin is a journalist by profession, from what I understand. Mr. Tem, are you ready? Can we have Mr. Tem? Yes, Mr. Tem, you're ready now. Go ahead. Mr. Tem, are you ready? Take Miss Jenny. Miss Jenny, do we have Miss Jenny? Thank you, Miss Jenny. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Yeah, um, before I continue, I want to congratulate. Your volume, um... be a little bit audible, Miss Jenny. <coughs> Yeah, before I go ahead, I want to... Is it now okay? Or yes. Or is it still too low? Okay. Yeah, then um, to congratulate Dr. Nick for his um, generous donation and also to express my respect to the Babila Foundation. I mean, going down to ground one to assess the situation, uh, to be there and to assess the situation is a very, I mean, big commitment that... You, the foundation needs to be credited for. Yeah, uh, I want to draw the attention of uh, Dr. Santo. It is like this, you know, uh, this coming together is, is very wonderful and it helps to reduce this uh, duplication of action. But one thing is very important that also those who are not in America, in the United States, um, we have a, a different approach in, in in Europe. I can talk. I can specify in in Germany how we raise uh, funds. Um, I forgot to mention at the beginning when I started introducing SCG Hamburg. SCG is also legalized and has um, when we issue receipts. These receipts are also tax deductible, and we also have to submit our documents to the the Ministry of Finance to prove that we have been that the, the money that the donors gave us have been well used, not that it was uh, being misappropriated. So um, synergizing and coming together, we have to see how things can work in a way that we also stay credible in the eyes of the German's authority. That is also one aspect because we are legalized, we are uh, legitimized to raise funds in Germany, in the whole of EU and in worldwide. 
So we are not limited. But the issue is the administrative aspect that we also have to prove our credibility. So whatever Dr. Santo is uh, doing, you have to take this into, con into consideration that for us, our funds come directly into the account of SCCG and then we implement projects. And if there are joint projects, we have to see how we can do it so that we also have something to back up when we are doing our, our uh, tax declaration to the Ministry of Finance, to that aspect. So, okay, coming to the projects that we have been implementing, we have adopted two, uh, two orphanages, one in Bingui and another in Manfi. And in these projects, it is uh, this governance, we have a long term, it is a sustainable project, like the one in being with this sustainable project. It is not something that we give the people food and medication once and then we leave. No, we are beginning, we're beginning by, 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 give, by buying them beds, bone beds and beds, and we need um, 16 of them since in that uh, particular orphanage um, in being with their 33 kids that this lady is taking care of. And when they came to us, they were just living in, I mean, a very, very deplorable condition. So now we have been able to supply them with 12 bone beds. We still need, no, sorry, with eight bone beds. We still need to go ahead and give them more and supply them more bone beds. What is also pending is also the toilets. They, they need good toilets. They, the, their building also has to be renovated. There are many things that we have to do. And the same, beside all of these projects, these uh, orphanages that we are, we, are, we are sustaining, we also embark on helping the IDPs and uh, we also help the refugees. Our last pro project with the refugees on ground one was on, in December when we sent um, we send help to some refugees in Abuja that call on our help. The thing, the good thing about us is that we are on website, so people now know about us. They send us letters. You can contact us through our info at SCG. Point DE and many of the Ambazonians are now, or Southern Cameroonians are now contacting us through this email or through when they get to know our website. What is very important in this forum where we are, where Dr. Santo and uh, the, uh, the Babila Foundation has brought us together is to see that we don't duplicate actions, is to coordinate actions and distribute the task. That will be very excellent if we can work in that manner. I, Thank you. About that question. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Um, Dr. Nick, um, say something about what she did. Yeah, uh, I'm so glad about her reminding us about that aspect of finances. You know, um, uh, you so far as he's running an NGO, which is also 501c in Germany, uh, she will proceed in the usual manner she has been doing of collecting her monies. And uh, Dr. Babila Foundation will proceed in the same manner in the U.S. to collect the money. She can collect from Germany and Europe. And uh, at the end of the day, we will meet in our CEO forums and we will know who has had what or what. And then we will divide the various, we will distribute the various functions or duties or tasks. And then we can finance who to fulfill what. So okay. for that, there is virtually no problem. Let people in Europe who are listening continue to fund the Mau Foundation, knowing that it's working with us. People in America and Canada or everywhere should also think about funding uh, uh, Dr. Babila's foundation because uh, at the end of the day, all of us still sit in our CEO forums and decide on who has to execute what. And there's also accountability and transparency in whatever has been received. Thank you. Okay. Uh, don't you all think that... Um, you all should have like an umbrella name because from from that I understand there might be some conflicts. For example, you all are already independent organizations. Yes. Now somebody maybe in South Africa have known Dr. Belinda Babila's foundation and mm -hmm. decided to make you know a donation towards that. Is it that from now onward, any donation that comes in goes for the IDPs, the refugees in Cameroon? Because you, you know, we don't want a situation where by the end of the day there is some kind of conflict amongst you all. Why, why can't it be um, kind of like a forum or a name that carries, that stands for everybody, and an account separate from Dr. Belinda Babila's foundation? Or how are you all going to solve that? Well, okay. Yeah. 
Well, being that this is this this is a group of registered, I mean, this is a group of in this group. Yes. Some of the of the charitable organizations are not registered. Okay. So, but they're doing charity work. Yes. So they don't have a legalized portal of system where they can report whatever has been given to them, or the donors can can t get tax benefits. So the reason why we had to come up with this was because we needed, you know, like a hub where, because at the end of the year, we give tax letters. This is tax season. People are receiving tax donation letters back to be able to get tax credit. So trying to create another organization, mm -hmm. that's you going through filings, that you go, it's like you have another new charity organization and I don't know how feasible that's going to be. So what we are calling this is an association of charitable organizations in the diaspora. Okay. So this is a group of charity organizations who've come together. Okay. So again, like I said before, to have it's like a centralized hop, a clear a clear vision, a clear board where everybody is in there and we all know who's doing what. Yes. Okay. It's it's like like, I mean, right now, the UNHCR is in charge of the refugees, but there are partners, NGOs that work under them. The partners, organizations that work under them, they are like the grandfather of everybody else. Mm -hmm. So this is more of, you know, let's be in a one hop because we're doing the same things in our different areas. But now let's, let's structureize it. Mm -hmm. Let's make it where we can stand collectively as a voice and, and you know, and even give up petitions on behalf of whatever we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, like, in, I mean, the, the more we come together, the greater the, greater the, the effect. In, it, addition, in, yes. in addition to that, uh, we, in the forum, we discuss about cases in accordance with the need. We take more critical cases first. We address more critical cases first. For example, if we have about five people who are in hospital, uh, suffering from diabetes and high blood or other kind of things or we we have to focus on that on saving the life first uh, before we focus on other lesser issues of emergency mm -hmm. so uh, each and every member of uh, um, every, every member of an organization within this body mm -hmm. comes up with earmark projects what kind of projects they want to undertake uh, how, who, what, what are the emergency situations attached to these projects? For example, this is rainy season. Uh, there may be a need to have uh, some people who are homeless or some people who, are, uh, who don't have anything to eat and going to be exposed to the bad weather. We have to address that first by sheltering them, providing them warm clothes, and uh, perhaps before coming to address a situation of someone who is well established already, you know. So, so we follow the needs. We yes. prioritize. Yes. Okay. Exactly. We prioritize. All right. That's good. If you prioritize, that's good. Okay. Um, I think Miss Pascaline is on now. Um, she says she's ready. Um, can we? Can you relay us to Miss Pascaline? Miss Pascaline, tell us a little bit. Okay. Uh, we don't have audio for Ms. Pascaline yet. Um, now, you did say something, uh, Dr. Belinda. Okay. You did say something, Dr. Belinda. Um, now, I have a question. My question is this. So what you're trying to say is that any donation that comes in the account of Dr. Belinda Babila Foundation is considered right now as donations meant for the general um, purpose of all of you coming together is that it? That's 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 it. That's but, a goal. <clears throat> but again, the Belinda Babylon Foundation is a foundation that has been in existence for the past two years, going on three years. Correct. We have our different standardized yes. campaigns that we run. Yes. One of them is the disaster relief, which which that's the reason why we're under the refugees and the internal displaced in the northwest and southwest of Cameroon. Yes. But we have other standardized activities that we carry. Yes. We have orphanages that we sustain, like Sister Jenny had said. We have our, we have orphanages, St. Arnel in Bonaberry. We have St. Joseph in Bamenda that we sustain on monthly basis or as neat as our resources permit us. Yes. We sustain, we have widows that we sustain on, on, on a constant, we've been following these widows for the past couple of years. We have orphans that we sustain. So we have projects that we've already been doing that are part of 
our different campaigns, the Bernard Babala Foundation helps you know, health empowerment campaigns. We have women empowerment campaign. We're offering, we have widows empowerment. And then we have, we have, we have the, the disaster, and then we, we fight hunger. So we are on blur. We have like six campaigns under the foundation. And we do, mind you, we're called Heal the World Africa because we do charity work in the entire continent of Africa. That's where the mandate is for. But begin, again, because this is a current core crisis, other, other um, campaigns have had to be halted. Mm -hmm. So that we address it, you know, okay, we address... That is what I was waiting for you to say. Yes. That all the other campaigns have been halted. The thing is, mixing the monies. For example, you have all these campaigns going on. Now, what happens? Uh, is there going to be a day where you say, oh, this money that came in was meant for this campaign that we've already been doing way before this started? That's where I'm coming in to say, how do you guys solve this problem? But if you say that all other campaigns what, have been halted. What, what and we now, mean halted, we mean, it does, like, I will not watch orphan kids yes. that I sustain go without food. Yes. And I only want to focus only on, on refugees. They are both needs. Yes. They are both need, valid and genuine needs. Okay. But again, when, whatever resource we have, we will appropriate it so that we can be able to touch Okay. So that, we, so that the other campaigns are not just completely deleted. No. Okay. Another, I yes. have a question. Yes, sir. Now, with all the different um, charity organizations that have come together, yes. you did mention that some of them are not registered. Yes. So how, I, how do you assess accountability of an organization that is not registered? Though they are doing their work, you know, they are doing their work, but they are not registered. How do you give some kind of a clean um, shit to donors? Because if there is some kind of accountability, donors will give more. Absolutely. It's a fact. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, also, how do you share the responsibilities? Say, for example, you have $100,000 that comes in. Okay. How do you share the responsibilities amongst the different organizations? The reason why I'm saying this is simple. If your organization takes $15,000 okay. and the, the MAU Ma organization, you give $5,000, that's already problem coming in. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm so how are you guys going to do the division where everybody is happy that, hey, you know, these have come in, okay. we see what is coming in, and we are using this okay. for our own purpose, okay. and we're not feeling like somebody is getting more okay. than another person okay, I because guess. apparently i see what is happening within the um different organizations some really want to take more credit so you know we, we don't we don't want a situation where you know there is a breakaway amongst you all because it's a good thing for you all to unite well, okay. how we wish those people fighting could do the same okay i think the reason that's the essence of why the Association of Cameroonian or, or of, of Charity Organizations in the Diaspora came about. Yes. The reason was because we're trying to defy the, you know, like, you know, this, this issue. Granted, as we are, all these organizations are doing work in their capacities. Mm -hmm. They're doing work. They've been doing work in their capacity, and they will still continue to, to do work in the capacity. But again, we decided that it's, it doesn't make sense for us all Whatever is your area of interest, all of us have our, our, our different areas, areas of, of interest. interest. And in that our forum, problems come and get you know tendered for us. So we are known already for you know for, as a solution providing uh, charity. Mm -hmm. So they tender us problems in there. So I mean, we will decide because before coming here, we we you know, well, mostly accepted. accepted. Yeah. To be work, to be to to work together. So I don't think we don't want to put money as an issue because the essence of it is not about money. The essence of it at the end of the day, it's about really, you know, having impact in the lives of these refugees and the yeah. internally displaced people. We've been doing that without without any um, any problem any problem. So we don't want to dwell on because right as we speak, we don't there's there's nothing in. But again, like you said, modalities we put in place where we all, you know, you know, would sit and agree on the strategy and the modality to use to get funds appropriated to everybody without any issues. Yeah, and to add to add something to that more, uh, we already have 
a list of projects exactly. that the various organizations have tendered. That's right. Uh, That's we right. have uh, sustainable projects for 2019. Yes, yes. You see, handbook or guide for refugees on counseling. Yes. Uh, about uh, sexually transmitted diseases and unwanted pregnancies. Yes. yes provision yes. of desk and yes. um, uh, sitting tables, yes. uh, sitting sitting chairs and, exactly. and desks for studying. Mm -hmm. There are some school projects also for the children of mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. the children in the camp, uh, for, as far as schooling is concerned. Yes. Uh, there are also. Um, uh, feeding, feeding, and then you have medication, mm -hmm. and uh, some sick and needy, some who are sick in the mm -hmm. hospital that need um, care. You have the tailoring, the tailoring project mm -hmm. to teach uh, our young, empowered on mm -hmm. tailoring. Mm -hmm. You have the farming, the farming project. Mm -hmm. You have um, uh, uh, Dr. Belinda Babila's other projects on in Cameroon, uh, and then we, all those have been tabled so that we know exactly. Who wants to do what, you know? So in that sense, uh, when the money comes in, we will know exactly uh, who can be given what to follow up what and bring back uh, the results to the forum. So in that, in that sense, I think um, we don't want to replicate what is happening in the political arena of the division and fighting and quarreling. Because I, I mean, remember, when I was here last time, I told you that to be able to function as a humanitarian, we, there are a lot of humanitarian opportunists. There are five cardinal core principles for you to understand before you can genuinely be a humanitarian. Mm -hmm. And where, where, which were they? I talked of the principle of beneficence. Do things that are of benefit to mankind. Non-malficence. Avoiding harming people. That's right. Justice. Do something that could be done as well to you equally in transparency and stuff. You have integrity. And then you have the respect for human dignity and the universal rights of others. That's if right. you do not put these five cardinal principles ahead of humanitarian work, then consider yourself an opportunity or a scammer in the field. I have a question for you, Dr. Nick. Thank you. Um, we've seen people preaching, especially about respect for human rights. I have a case of um, someone that has been respected in the revolution as far back as he was young, mm -hmm. fighting for his people. He comes out every day and talks about the Geneva Convention. But recently, our investigation team, we picked out that he is among those people who kidnap and seek ransom from our people. That's Ebenezer Akwanga. So we, we hope that what you are preaching is what you practice and that all these modalities that you're giving, because I'll let you know this. The fact that you've come here, we'll be investigating your organizations. And if we realize that there is a flaw, we'll call you out behind the scene to say, hey, correct this. We've had people like Ebenezer Kwanga, whose ego is as big as China and India, that when you call him and say, hey, this is what is going on, he tries to threaten you. Well, it's a message I'm sending to him. He cannot threaten me, and he should be very ready because there is a big war coming between my organization and what he's doing down there to our people. This, this is, this is, this is just out of context of what we are talking right yeah, here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just people that come to preach something. Let me and they go back let, and do something. Let me tell else. you. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Um, in this revolution, yes. or in this revolution that is ongoing, which has led to all this catastrophe and mess, which we are about to to heal, right? Yes. A lot of people have have begun the revolution or began pro or a lot of people begin projects with good faith. Somewhere along the line, they become psychologically disturbed. What I discovered with my resignation from the interim government was that there was a time that I found my emotions and I found my own self going out of proportion. And so as a human being, very few human beings have that emotional resilience or to know when those triggers kick in for you to take a sabbatical to go on your own sanity cleansing. Thank you very much. So, let me tell you, yes. a lot of the folks who go around ranting on social media about this revolution or about anything concerning humanitarian stuff, most of them are fake because one, they have, they, have, they have not been able to realize that threshold when their genuity stops and insanity kicks in. So when you take some sabbatical leave from, and go into your own uh, counseling yourself, to, you become more 
uh, you re-energize to come back and be more sensible in what you are doing. Yeah. I can should say, it, can you take it upon yourself yes. to consult those leaders individually if you pick out that some of them are actually going through what you're just explaining right now? Because it will help. Don't just focus or concentrate on the refugees and the IDPs. As humans, we go through periods of time where we might be going through this phase in our lives. Mm -hmm. And that's your field. You see them every day, they come out there. Some of them are actually having psychological problems. Uh, to be candid, I discussed this with Dr. Belinda last night. Fortunately enough, Dr. Belinda is a minister and is also a religious counselor. She ministers spiritually, she's strong. And I discussed to her, I discussed with her this from the therapeutic angle. Yes. I told her that candidly, this, the effects of this revolution may go for a hundred years. What do you think about a child getting up in the morning and to find the head, a man that has been beheaded and the head is lying on the staircase? What do you, what do you expect will be that child's future? How will he lead a successful life? What do you think about the gunshots that sick two years or three years children happen to hear and go under the bed? What do you think about a situation whereby somebody was two minutes talking to you and was just shot in cool blood in front of you. It has left a lot of people traumatized, suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, panic phobia, and depression. And you know, we don't have the same kind of resilience. The way I will be depressed is not the way you will be depressed. Some yes. people's depression may even go to become psychotic. Psychotic means there's the delusion and hallucination aspect of it, and you are almost tilting towards schizophrenia. That's right. So Those they will be talking and talking there. by themselves on the streets. These are things, and in this, in this revolution or in this cata human catastrophe where we are now, people are undergoing their worst. You can see people who began talking peacefully about this revolution have now become something else. You can see my, my, one of my uncle and neighbors was kidnapped 48 hours ago, and I received a phone call, and I wrote it online. This man is a peaceful man. He doesn't know anything about anything concerning revolution. They came and asked him to bring guns. He said he had his then guns for going to cry dice, and he went to dump. And seeing that there were forces all over the place, he did not return with the gun. He disposed of it for his own safety. They told him to put on his pullovers, follow them, and they took him to the bush for 48 hours. When they saw that communicator that I sent out, that that's my relative that has been kidnapped. I cannot be helping in yes. helping people, and then my own relatives are kidnapped. So what happened? He was just released today. Oh, that's good. He was released today. He was not touched. What about somebody? T Many people have suffered this fate. The question now is, those kidnapping, they need to undergo some mental sanity. Because I don't even know how you take somebody and go and sleep in the bush for 48 hours or 72 hours. Wait, where do you sleep? I've never spent even two hours in the dark outside in the night. <laughs> Well, Dr. So, Nick, see, the problem, actually, you should understand, when you carry a gun, you have to survive. Some of the problems, some of the fighters, they're on drugs. Now, that is not even the issue. The issue is the leaders abroad collect money and don't send it. They don't fulfill their promises to those guys. So those guys carrying guns, they have no option but to make sure that they can make money to do what they have to do. That is the frustration. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? That is a frustration. Because they have guns, they are hungry, they need to refill their guns. So when they cannot get the promises fulfilled from these leaders like Ebenezer Akwanga, they end up doing what? Kidnapping our people, causing pain to our people. It has gotten to the point where the people now prefer the soldiers than those people that are supposed to be protecting them. It is bizarre. The earlier they rectify the situation and come together, the better.
Well, I know Dr. Belinda is lost because this is not her area. Yes, right? yes, yes. <laughs> well, we're very sorry, <laughs> yes. Dr. Belinda. We we're, sorry, we're sorry to put it to this we'll move on to I'm like, are we still doing a charity organization? We'll move, move on to, we'll move on to or, Mr. Tim yeah. Palati okay, if he's ready. I am totally lost. This is the psychological, though. Yeah, the I, well, I, mean, yeah, the I know, I know. And, and that's so really, it's, it's my part that's what we're doing is we're, salvage, that we're salvaging the aftermath of the, of the of crisis. Because it has left people you know, going through a lot of mental, mental issue. I mean, right now, I our approach is body, mind, and soul. It's a holistic approach at this level. Yeah. Because it's not only about the physical, and that's why we come in strong with the word of God as well. Because yes. to me, I believe that that's that's the number one medicine before you go take chemicals. The word of God is life. You know, and that's why we we are a Christian charity. So we go hand in hand with the words, the promises that God has for us, so that in that way we can heal the mind. Once the mind is healed, then they can begin to really have hope. They can begin to really want to, you know, regain strength because the truth is some kind of power needs to restrain you after you've gone through such desperation and such deployable conditions. Yeah. So we, we, we are very, very big in aligning spirituality with our humanitarian activities. And that's why during our last outreach, we had an awesome time. We actually had church service okay. at the camp. That was one of my most memorable moments in my entire existence. Yeah, to good. go in there and see in the midst of their pain. And like you told me, you in the bought, midst you bought, of you bought some seats for children yes. who were attending church service sitting on the, on the floor. Bare I floor. mean actually we might have got in there. When we got do do doing the need assessment, yes. adults are, are, are obviously don't have chairs. They rent chairs for church. So there are the kids as we speak sit on the floor. So that's I, I came back and we started a drive to buy them a thousand chairs. Wow. The kids are I wish they can show pictures as I'm speaking right now. I wish the you know the media guys can show us. They are on the floor. They sit on the floor to attend to attend church service. <laughs> You know, I mean, there's some things that when you wait, I bet, you know, again, let me not digress. The church we had, I could see the power of God at work. People are, they've left their homes thousands of miles away. They've left everything they worked for entirely. Houses burnt. L listen, I tell people, until you, until you go, I mean, we're speaking on an empathetic level. But if this had happened to you, so what I always do is I put myself in somebody's shoes. What if it were me? Where do I start? I mean, just imagine you losing everything. The way that's a that's a valid cost to go mental. That's a valid cost to go insane. Yeah, losing everything in your that's life. That's a valid cost everything. to you know to get up and want to be bitter with everybody. So how do we salvage that? How do we get the mind back? To, you know, bring the mind back to a positive state where you can be able to. We, you know, we, we, you know, you like, you know, get that momentum to get yourself back together to want to run again. To me, it takes the word of God and counseling. Yeah, those and counseling two, where, where, together, I and you, where I and you share much in common. Yes, is because as a therapist, we have the cognitive behavioral therapy, exactly, which uses the rational, emotive Christian behavioral therapy. Absolutely. So sometimes Absolutely. when you be, when you are faced with a challenging client. Sometimes when you adopt this approach, yes, it works best. It works best, and that's where treatment that's where plans we, I understand. are done. Yeah, treatment plans treatment are done, and whichever approach would would bring the best. Because at the end of the day, we're worried about results. If we're doing all of this and results are not attained, to me, it's it, it's it, frustrating. It's it, 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 it's pointless. Yeah. At the end of the day, numbers are put in, and then we do eva. We you know we reevaluate. We reevaluate. I mean, we you know we assess the problem. Of, Obviously, get a plan, implement it, reevaluate it, and see if the plan is working, and they keep going from there. It's just, you know, the same process over and over. Like, again, I said, we are church service. And amazingly, I was so touched, I was in tears to see how people can still trust God in the midst of what they didn't ask for. They could still stand and glorify God in, in the midst of the, you know, the effects of things that they didn't never bargain for. That's where you know that indeed <coughs> there's power in the word of God and there's power in God. And that's where, you know, as a Christian charity slash, you know, we, we, are, we are very big on that. You know, we're very big on that, you know, making sure that, you know, at the end of the day, 
we go back to instill hope. Instill hope in that lost situation. Okay. Instill, you know, you know, uh, uh, um, beliefs, you know, in in a in a situation of despair where they know that, and that's where we're coming together as a group of you know charities with our different empowerment programs. Yes. Okay. To see it either at the end of the day, from that zero that they are, they become heroes. From that despair that they are, they become victor. At the, at the end of the day, they leave Nigeria. Whenever God's going to bless this crisis to stop, they go back home empowered. Um, I'll add one thing. Yes. Sorry. The viewers can take a look at the composition of the members of the CEO forums. Yes. You will judge for yourself that there is no one there who is not well to do somehow. The problem has always come with corruption, embezzlement, mismanagement, because when you take people who don't have to eat and entrust them money, what becomes of that? They take care of their needs first. So, you, for example, you can judge from all of us. You see that first we work very hard. We put our own money into the projects first before we expect others to support because we believe that when we put money by showing, leading by example, it does motivate the people to donate. The, the BBF Foundation last year, we took a container full of medical supplies to the um, camp, and obviously that was shown in December, where we actually, you know, went in there and really, really sustained them medically. And we actually, from what we did, we, we had a letter of recognition, and we have testimonial videos that they said, during the entire crisis of the refugees being migrated to Nigeria, we are the first charity that has given them them that much medical support. We have a letter to attest to that from the director of Rema Care, Reverend Su. Yeah. And as we speak right now, we are an accredited, you know, recognized charity to go in there and sustain. And as we speak right now, I am in charge of the medical unit over there. We have a forum of ourselves. Dr. Santos is part of it as well, where what we do is we oversee the health conditions and the care provided to the refugees because I, we believe in checks and balances. Somebody has to oversee what is going on. And we've taken upon ourselves to be to volunteer our time and, and our services to see into it that the refugees there get the optimal services that they can get. For example, we've we you know collectively on our WhatsApp forum, cases get brought to us, cases get reviewed, cases we you know we make sure and then as we speak, we want to make that every month there is an annual health, health uh, preventive screening going on where the Rema Care unit, which is the functional unit, the health functional unit at the refugee camp in Adagom, we want to make sure that they do a screening. While I was there this, this December, we did screen blood pressure screenings and diabetic screenings. We screened over close to, um, because of lack of resources and time. I think we screened over well over two to three hundred people. And from that we made referral cases. People in there who never knew they had blood pressure, people in there who, who never knew that they had diabetes. You know, we had to make sure that you know they come back for rechecks and rechecks so that a confirmed diagnosis can be made. So cases like that, you know, we're trying to prevent diseases before it gets worse. Well, okay, yes. let's yes. let's go to Miss Tessie. I okay. think Miss Tessie says her audio everything is perfect. Um, can we go to Miss Tessie? She has to she has, she has some things to say about um, okay. the challenges of refugees and um, yeah. Miss Tessie, you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. It's challenges. Can you hear me? They have never been taken care of. Can you hear me? We can't hear your audio well. Hello, Miss Jesse. One second. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Go ahead. 
please don't move from the position you are because we can get you very well now. It's that um, from my observation, the refugees in the camp, everybody will leave from wherever and they go to the camps with all the goods to share to the refugees in the various camps. But because I have people on the ground in various localities, there is a serious challenge. And this challenge is the fact that we have thousands of refugees that none of them has ever had a single grain of help from any organizations, either it is the United Nations themselves. They have not been there. Um, we have presently, at um, last week, we had a guest speaker at the Mau meeting who came from one of the neighboring Calabar villages. He is in charge of 22 villages, which are more than 1,500 refugees over there. But these people have never had assistance from anybody. The people of Obudu Ranch, for example, for the past six months, they have not had help from nobody. The United Nations has not gone there to distribute food because everyone is concentrating on the camps. This is something of importance to raise awareness that as we try to reach out to these ones in the suburbs, the help that we are giving is not enough. So people should know that refugees are not only in those central camps. There are thousands of our people in various localities suffering with no assistance. Presently, I'm speaking, there is one in the hospital with an accident. His legs are totally shattered and we need assistance to help him. He's not of the camp, but he's of one of those um, bush localities. So um, when, if we know that um, we have our people, another thing that we want to talk about is the fact that there are many refugees that are being hosted by the natives. And these ones are living in very deplorable conditions. It is so important, yes, that they should be registered, but the system of registration by the United Nations is very slow. Today they are talking of 30,000, but we have more than 60,000 refugees in Nigeria. If, if in the month of March, the census that Mao carried out, we had 45,000, then what about now? So please, we want to go more to know that um, the camps that have been provided for our refugees cannot accommodate all. So we have our people in other places. As we are giving help, we should think of these ones in remote areas. That is why Mao is trying in all its ways to carry out empowerment in these areas, encourage them to have community farming so that they can be able to produce food and take care of themselves and even to sell so that even if they are sick, they can be able to have money to take their patients to the hospital. Uh, it was quite important to bring this point because I know the central focus from all the organizations I've been seeing going to Nigeria to distribute, they go to the camps and when there are so many still suffering. Thank you. On January um, 18th, 2019, the Center for Human Rights and Democracy in Africa, that is um, an organization being led by Barrister Agbobala, visited a health facility in Boya, the southwest region of Cameroon, where they met with Atabong Mabel and her three-week-old baby. Um, can the police say, can you put the pictures of the baby? Yes, the picture of this baby really touched our hearts here in the studio. Um, the three-week-old baby uh, was admitted and um, is deteriorating due to the issue of this armed conflicts in the said region. It is certain that the baby was delivered via surgical operation and that the same three-week-old baby has gone through many surgical operations. The several surgical operations are because the baby was diagnosed of spinal bifida and hynea. It is reported, I'm just reading based on the information that was put up by Barista Bala. So it is reported that the outstanding bill for the spinal surgery stands at 750,000 francs CFE, 
which is approximately about $1,302. Plus an outstanding pharmacy and bed space bill of 96,900 francs CFA, which in dollars is $168. Now, CHRDA therefore pleads on the presence of goodwill to contribute funds to save the life of this baby and assist the nursing mother in affording proper nutrition and care for herself and her tender. Please, if you want to contribute, if this baby, if you see the picture and it touches your heart, send your contributions and you can make it through this orange mobile money, 68103. One seven six five. Uh, producer, can you put this number? Obviously, the zip code of the country, Cameroon, is plus two three seven, and the phone number is six eight one zero three one seven six five. The MTN mobile money is plus two three seven six five eight six seven six six nine eight. And of course, to those abroad who want to make contributions, especially those in uh, the USA that have PayPal, they can make their contribution um, with the PayPal uh, information chrda at chrda.org. Again, via PayPal, chrda at chrda.org.org. Please, please, please let this touch your heart and let us do something. I will personally start this fundraising with a sum of $102. So we have $1,200 left to take care of this surgery that is wanted. Um, let's move on now to... Um, vision to help our brothers um, that have decided to come together that they've sat and they've thought about it like we can't do this by ourselves but if we come together like it is said that many hands do light work so they've decided to come together as one to do the work for our people back home those that are IDPs and those refugees in Nigeria we are going to put the information out there for contributions. You can contribute to them. Um, we'll do our best to, you know, every now and then to find out, you know, what they are doing and how our people are receiving this assistance. Um, can you send us or put us um, the information of how people can contribute to the Belinda Babila Foundation? Also, the Linda Babila Foundation, do you have a website, Ms. Yes, Babila? Yes, we Babila? do. Everything I sent you, everything. Okay. What, what is everything. your website so you can it, say it and also it, read the information yeah. of how they can, okay. they can contribute? Yeah, the, the website is www.killtheworldafrica. <coughs> the Africa is with a K, dot com. You guys can contribute. You, you can write a check to the foundation's account, which is the Linda Babila Foundation. So you make the check payable. So the Babylon Foundation, we have a cash app as well. And the cash app number is dollar sign, or the cash app name is dollar sign B Babila. And it's spelled B-A-B-I-L-A. And we have a Zelle account, or or rather the cash app number to give to it's 214-916-8240. 214-916-8240. We have a Zelle as well. And Zell Portal, you just need to use the number, the phone number. It's 214-916-8240. 214-916-8240. Okay. And we also have a PayPal. The PayPal is just donate or, you know, just donate at Belinda Babylon Foundation. Or you just, just send an email to Belinda Babylon Foundation F okay. at gmail.com. Okay, yes. Um, I think the producer has it down there. It's scrolling on our lower third okay. so the people can see it. Yes, okay. um, that is um, the heal the world Africa. Africa dot com. Com. That's the website. Yes. You can see it there on our lower thirds of how you can contribute. Contributions um, to the Belinda Babila Foundation 
will go a long way to assist um, the ladies, these gentlemen that have decided to come together um, and bring aid, bring help to our people that are suffering. Um, Dr. Nick, you have something to say. Yeah, um, it's rather pathetic seeing this issue of uh, this newborn baby going through all this. There's one pressing case, or urgent case that we have as well, a cancer case. I think that case is in Boya, and we are also trying to work on it because uh, this lady was suffering with cancer uh, around the mouth, and uh, they took off the meat, the lips, and they had to cut a chunk of beef from the leg to patch it with, to fill that space, and it never worked. It's all over social media. I think uh, John, Ch Ach John Ach Chester, Ach yes, she's about to be flown to India. The first plan was to fly her to India for attention, medical attention, but John Chester of the Ambazonia uh, Foundation, uh, our American uh, humanitarian, uh, is working a deal for her to come to the United States. So John Chester, John Chester, mm -hmm. personally informed me on my way at the airport. He called me on phone and said, Dr. Nick, please don't forget about that case, that cancerous case in Boya. We, the one where there was the chunk of meat removed from the leg and put on the lips that did not work. We had, she, that lady has to be flown uh, to the United States and he is ready to give all the available papers that are needed. But the issue is finance. So uh, I think uh, if we, anybody who is contributing to Dr. Belinda Babila's foundation and wants it to be targeted towards that, should just kindly indicate to her. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Okay, that's, that's a good one right there. Um, on that note, too, I will also contribute a hundred dollars towards that. Thank you. Um, God bless you. God bless you. You, you, did, you did a good job, yes, my brother. Um, well, just so you all know, I think I, I never mentioned, but maybe one day I'll talk about it. I think I started a charity organization more than 20 years ago. For those that are from Tico, that they Mental know, health. Yes, that has to do <laughs> something with mental health and um, those people in jail you know we have we have a track record on that but we're not going to dive into that right now so i feel touched every time when i see situations like this and um, why not do something um we thank um mr chester that you said what's the name of his organization uh ambazonia foundation inc okay yes yeah. I, I know ambazonia at one foundation. time when i was doing some investigation we realized that he has Two pickup trucks, if that's the guy yes, you're talking in Nigeria. about. In Nigeria, that helps to yes. transport food to our refugees yes. down there. Yes. Um, let's give a shout out to, to, to this gentleman. He's an American and he's been doing a marvelous job to our people. Um, we call on you know benevolent people, individuals, you know, philanthropists to help. Um, there are so many different ways you can help these gentlemen and women that are doing their best to help our people. Um, at this juncture, uh, we don't want to keep our audience for too long. Ms. Babila, you have something? Well, I was just to... gonna like, um, just let the audience know because I believe that when people give, they wanna like, you know, they wanna know what is in like the different projects at hand. And we yes. came here with projects already for planned because, you know, we work, you know, so like for example, like the charities, what, what we want to be doing is that Rather than each and everyone giving money for food, yes. we'll have a quarterly budget, which is like, you know, a collective budget of food for all charities from the states. So we can decide, like, for, like from this estimate that we did, this is, uh, like, you know, a, a quarterly food project for all the refugee camps. In the whole in Nigeria. Nigeria, exactly. Okay. And, you know, this is just Nigeria. So we have these two for, like, Cameroon. All the, the IDPs piece. in Cameroon, we have a quarterly budget. So what happens is that when the money comes, we, we allocate that every month from this. This goes every month to this. That way, we're not each, each, each sending. They get a global sum of money that comes in. And they manage that for the entire quarter. So it, so it, it reduces us from doing petty, petty activities every day. So, for example, this, this is a draft year mm. of... A, you know, quarterly food project for the camps in Nigeria, 100 bags of rice, 100 bags of gari, 100 bags glitters of palm oil, 100 cartons of tomatoes, 50 bags of um, 
um, so. hundred bags of salt, hundred bags of maggi, hundred bags, hundred cartons of spice. They call it onga for seasoning, and then transportation for. So all of this amounts to four million five hundred thousand naira, which is about twelve thousand eight hundred and seventy five dollars. So, but you see, when we have this kind of project yes. out, we know that this would hold them for three months at least. Okay, uh, you okay, know, Babila, I don't want to cut you short. I know there is a way you you guys have done to identify our refugees in Nigeria. Yes. But what is the uh, how have you guys been able to identify our IDPs and how do they get this assistance? Uh, that's why we say we, in the CEO forums we yeah. have IDP leaders. Okay. Yes. So so that's basically they are not registered NGOs, yes. but they are working on ground. Yes. So yes. that's why we came we came together so that it's centralized. We get we know all. The leaders everywhere yes, now, yes. and when we send, when we do distribution, yeah. it's accounted. Okay, we have and a forum we have whereby a forum. all, even up to the jails. Yes, yes. But let me tell you, yes. we have a forum whereby the IDPs and the refugees, yes. their leaders in the various cities, cities and the various camps are okay. members are part of us. Yes. Okay. Their role is just to report to us yes. how they sleep every day. Exactly. Okay. So that it makes it easy where we, it makes, we so get to like, okay. possible with everybody. Okay, uh, viewers, just so that you guys would know, we just had our December report of yes. Can the you IDP, give us a little bit which, about which I report? will. We just had the December re report of the of the of our, I, of the um, our people no, are internally displaced south. people in the northwest and the southwest, southwest mm. respectively. We're still working on the farm north area. Yeah. So for right now, we're working on the you know this is so so far. There's three thousand seven hundred unaccompanied children which need assistance and psychosocial care in the northwest and, and the southwest region. Cameroon. Forty percent of clinics. In the northwest, no longer provide vaccination. No vaccinations for the children. No vaccination anymore. And eighty-five percent of births are given now without assistance. Without assistance. Wow. Yes. That reminds. One point two people. One one point three million people are in need. Uh, in need. Yeah. Four hundred and thirty-seven thousand. Four hundred thirty-seven five hundred people. Um. Internally displaced. displaced people. So and right, we have half a million people. Who are in host communities? In host communities. That means they are no in longer in their houses. They are no longer in their houses. Yes. So that's why we say when these fundings come, yeah. the leaders in every of those different areas, they give us reports. At the end of the day, there's so many monthly reports. Look at this one. You know? Very funny. Yes. 160,000 people are targeted for elimination by either side of the aisle. Okay. It's now, I have, I have, either side of the I have yes. this question. This will come to you because um, Dr. Babila has nothing to do with yes. um, those um, yes. fighting. Yes. This question is to you. The interim government, which you were a member of that interim yes. government, do they know about this group of um, non-governmental organizations that have come together? And with all the monies that they have collected, have they tried to support you guys in yeah. what you guys are doing? Hold on. I'm clear. Yeah, I'm uh, the reason why I'm saying mm -hmm. so is we are actually having some tips because we do a lot of investigation. I want our viewers to understand that those people in the interim government, they, they are scared to come up for interview, and it is a challenge. If you don't have anything to have,